so I'll be... Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are back for another tutorial and today it's just a straight up tutorial for the first time in quite a while. We're not doing like a first impression or anything like that. Although I will be trying the new Urban Decay Troublemaker Mascara for the first time. Uh, well, mostly the first time I used it this morning. So I'll kind of give you like a little bit of my first impression on that. But it's nice and cool and crisp out here today, which made me feel like kind of diving into more of like the burgundy tones and stuff. Like I'm kind of feeling the fall vibes just slowly creeping into my life. And I'm really, really excited about it. Although I still have like a beachy, ooh, I just burped, excuse me. Although I still have like a beachy summer vacation coming up for the end of the summer and I'm like trying to stay excited for that rather than like skipping over that and getting excited for fall. But uh, I was in the mood, the mood struck, the burgundy lipstick came out and here we are. So the look we're doing today is like a negative space winged liner kind of smoked out around the edges. I threw a little bit of like a splashy metallic liquidy gold and an ombre metallic burgundy lip. It looks a lot harder than it is. Doing a negative space wing like this is so much easier than you would think it is. You just need to know how to do it. So I will show you my tricks on how I do that. The easiest way ever, honestly, it's not much harder than doing just regular winged liner. It just takes a little tiny bit more patience. That's all you need to know. Everything's pretty straightforward today. Let's just jump right into the makeup, zoom in, get started painting this face. First things first, we're going to go in with an old favorite. This is the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. And I'm going to start with a transition shade. I'm going to use Raw Sienna on a Sigma E40 blending brush. Next, I want to make a guideline for where I'm going to place the negative space wing slash cut crease type of a thing. I want to make a framework for it so I know approximately where to place the shadows and blend out from, but uh, I don't want it to be something dark that I'm going to have to work really hard to cover up. So what I'm going to do is put like a very, very faint shape down with an eyebrow pencil. I'm going to use the ABH uh, Brow Wiz in medium brown. For my eye shape, what I'm being conscious of is the fact that the end of my eye is a little bit hooded, so I'm bringing it out past that so it doesn't get like sprinkled down from it. And also I'm bringing it up past my natural crease just a touch, just to avoid where it's wrinkly so we could get a nice clean shape. You could probably barely even see that on camera, but what it'll do is serve as a blueprint for where we want to start smoking out our eyeshadows. And I don't want to put too much eyeshadow in the area that's gonna be negative space because then it's gonna be a pain in the ass to cover, it might get muddy. So to avoid that, it's easier just to kind of get an idea of where you want the shape to be. It's probably gonna go within the lines of that a little bit anyway. There's not really any avoiding it or making it perfect unless you're just gonna go right for it and like, do like very, very precise motions and take a really long time to do that. But since we're gonna go in and go back over it with a light color anyway, to get the negative space effect, um, we might as well not pack a ton of eyeshadow onto that area. Now I'm gonna grab a little bit of the color Venetian Red on a Sigma E30 pencil brush. And I'm just gonna softly trace along that outline to start smoking out around the edges of that shape. Now that that general shape is there and it's starting to be blended out a little bit, I wanted to find that shape a little bit more and deepen the red. So I'm going to use a little bit of the color Red Ochre on this tiny little e.l.f. brush. This is an eyeliner brush, but it's on the larger side, so it's almost like a tiny pencil brush. And I'm just going to trace that along the edges of that shape and blend it out like a tiny bit with this brush as I do it, but I don't want to blend it out a ton because I do want to concentrate that color and that shape. So since I didn't put a ton of shadows into the negative space area because I kind of defined it beforehand, uh, it's going to be a little bit easier to clean up the negative space. So I'm going to grab a really small angled brush 
This is a Sigma E06 Wind Liner Brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of Tarte Shape Tape with that, which is a very high coverage concealer that also dries down and doesn't budge, which is perfect for something like this. I'm going to pack a little bit of that onto that tiny wind liner brush, and I'm going to define the outer edge, and I'm going to define the inner corner. I'm gonna leave the middle though, and just kind of blend the concealer into that, because most of the time on my eye shape, you can't see the center anyway, and to avoid any creasing, or a product buildup that's not necessary. Uh, it's just, you just, I don't need it there, so I'm gonna skip it. But if you have an eye shape where the entire line shows all the way across, you might find that if you do something like this, you need to bring it all the way across the entire lid with the concealer, but I do not. See how sharp that shape is now compared to the other eye? Okay, after the concealer, now that shape is like just where I want it to be. So I am going to go ahead and conceal underneath my eyes and then I'm going to set that with powder and probably put down a little bit of extra loose powder so that if there's any fallout, I don't have any issues with that. Um, but yeah, we'll be right back, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I have a bunch of powder under my eyes just in case we encounter any fallout. And now it's time to connect that wing into the lower lash line. So I'm gonna pick up that same pencil brush that I used earlier and a little bit of that shade Venetian Red. And I'm gonna connect that blend from the outside of the wing underneath the eye. I've also decided that I want a little bit more depth on the underneath side of that wing and I want to keep it in like a red tone and I also want that depth to continue to underneath my lower lash line for a little definition there. So I'm going to grab the Urban Decay 24-7 pencil in the color Alkaline. Instead of applying that straight from the pencil, I'm going to pick some of that product up on a small angle brush. This is a Sephora small angle brush. I'm just going to pick that up by running it across the side of the pencil and I'm going to just use that angle brush to stamp that along the bottom side of that wing and also stamp it underneath my lower lash line. And the best type of motion I find for this type of application is like a stamp and then drag. So like stamp it down right where you want it to lay and then drag it. I went ahead and swept the powder away because I'm done working with powder shadows for now, so there should not be any more issue with fallout as we go forward. Next, I wanna brighten up my lower waterline. So I'm just gonna run through that with the Walk of Shame liner pencil from Urban Decay. Okay, so what I'm about to do might very well ruin this entire look. I guess we will find out. So this is cool, but it's a little bit boring. So what I am going to do is use a liquid gold to do like, instead of an inner corner highlight, I'm going to do like splashes of like, like painterly splashy splashes in the inner corner with that bright gold. Um, I really like splashy painterly style makeup. It's kind of like been my thing lately. You guys have probably noticed that a few of the tutorials and a lot of the makeup looks I've been putting up on Instagram are like that. But what I really, really like is the juxtaposition of like this very geometric shape plus like the painterly splashy thing. Ooh, I like it. What I'm going to use is the Mayron Gold Metallic Powder. And I'm going to be mixing that with the Mayron Mixing Liquid. Basically, this is the pan I always use to work with it, so it already has some in the bottom, but I'm just gonna go right ahead into this dirty one because it doesn't really seem to make much of a difference. Pour a little bit of the powder into the pan and then put the mixing liquid in with that, mix it together until you get a consistency that works for you. And when you're working with this stuff, it literally looks like liquid metal and it dries and sets, but the brightness and like liquidiness of like the look of it still kind of remains. It's a really, really very like unique product in that way. And it doesn't really get as much credit on the streets as I feel like it should. It's really hard to show you guys how I'm mixing it without tipping the pan too much and dripping it all over everything, but that's kind of what it looks like. And I'm going to apply that to the inner corner area in a splashy, organic-y kind of a pattern using the Sigma E06 Wing Liner Brush. This is a second clean one. This is not the same one that I use to put the concealer on because I don't want the two products to get muddy together.
I'm just gonna pop off camera now and apply some mascara and false lashes. The mascara that I'm going to use today, I already actually have a little bit on of it, but they said you could layer it, so I'm going to go back over the top and see if that's true. This is the Urban Decay Troublemaker Mascara. This is a new release. I'm not even sure if it's out yet. This just arrived on my doorstep this morning. Normally, I don't wear any mascara that's not waterproof, but the claims to this are that it stays on all day and also that it holds a curl even though it's not waterproof. They also said it's sex proof, which is like, who tested that? The first layer that I put on earlier this morning just to kind of test it out does seem to have held a curl enough to mix well with my false lashes, which is really all I ask for because I wear false lashes most days anyway. So um, I'm gonna continue to use this for the rest of the day and see what I think of it. I'm gonna pop those false lashes on and then we'll be back and we'll get to the lips. Okay, lashes and mascara are on. Um, I didn't even curl my lashes before applying this mascara and they kind of curled on their own, which they never do with the mascara. And they seem to be holding Holding it and they're also super duper black and blending in pretty well with my falsies. Uh, we'll see if they droop throughout the day and I'll kind of like let you guys know down the line how I feel about this mascara but uh, so far first impression uh, this is the first non waterproof mascara that I've even remotely liked in a really long time so that's kind of cool hopefully it's easier to remove because sometimes I feel like I'm pulling my fucking lashes out trying to get waterproof mascara up. So if I could enjoy one that's not waterproof, that would be awesome. For the lip today, I want to do something deep and sexy and burgundy, and I also want to make it metallic. For, so for the base, I'm going to use Knobloch Cosmetics Liquid Lipstick in the color Unspoken. I've actually never used this shade before, so it could be completely wrong, but from inside the tube, it looks pretty good. Even just on its own, this lipstick is really gorgeous, but we're not going to leave well enough alone today because who would I be if I just left well enough alone? I'm also going to grab this Nabla Cosmetics Metallic Rose Gold Liquid Lipstick in the color Antimatter. And I don't want to put this over the entire thing because it'll just cover that color completely, but I'm going to take a little bit of it on my ring finger and pat it in the center and on Cupid's bow. And because I really never know when to leave anything alone, I'm going to go back over that center area with the Kat Von D Glimmer Veil in the shade Thunderstruck. And again, I don't want that to take away from the color too much, but I do want the glitter from it and the shimmer from it. So I'm going to take that on my finger again and just dab that over the top. Okay, I'm not mad at that at all. I'm glad I did that. Ooh, 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 this looks good. Ooh, I like that lip combo. Ooh, I got a little bit of schmutz in the corner. I'm gonna clean that up. And this is the finished look. And that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I always appreciate it. I always appreciate when you guys leave comments. It warms my heart when you guys laugh at the stupid shit that I say. It makes my entire day. This lip combination is just, mm, mm, it is just rocking my socks off around the block. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it because that really helps me out. It helps me to understand what you guys like to see on this channel and it also helps other people see my videos. So thank you in advance. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already because I mean, why not? Come on, we'll have a good time. Don't forget to also go ahead and follow me on social media. I'm at Miss Quinface on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. I'll list that all everywhere that you can imagine that you could possibly need to find it, but I'm just at Miss Quinface everywhere. So also just super easy to find. I hope you guys enjoyed this look. I know it's like a little bit early for fall colors, but we're, we're gonna start transitioning soon, okay? At least where I live, it's already starting to get a little chilly out at nighttime. It's like 55 degrees, like that, that's, that's, that's fall appropriate, you know? I'd get a hot latte. I'm sorry to babble, so I'm gonna shut up now. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.